Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Thousands of people, almost 10 years, and billions of dollars to lift a human being into space. Russell Schweikert, lunar module pilot for the Apollo 9 flight, recalls the experience. begin to recognize that your identity is with that whole thing and that makes a change and you look down there and you can't imagine how many borders and boundaries you cross again and again and again and you don't even see them from where you see it the thing is a whole and it's so beautiful and you recall standing out there the spectacle that went before your eyes because now you're no longer inside something with a window looking out at a picture. But now you're out there and there are no limits to it. There are no frames. There are no boundaries. And you think about what you're experiencing and why. Do you deserve this? This fantastic experience? Are you separated out to be touched by God to have some special experience here that other men cannot have? And you know the answer to that is no. You know very well at that moment and it comes through to you so powerfully that you're the sensing element for man. The sensing element. From that immense perspective of outer space, we can gain an insight into mankind's true relationship with the universe, with planet Earth, and with all life as we know it. A new perspective for all humanity a perspective for what Einstein had called a new mode of thinking. There you are, hundreds of people killing each other over some imaginary line that you, you're not even aware of, that you can't see. And, and from where you see it, the thing is a whole and it's so beautiful. And you, and you wish you could take one in each hand and say, look, look at it from this perspective. Look at that. What's important? And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing, is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and birth and love, tears, joy, games, all of it on that little spot out there that you can cover with your thumb. You look down and you see that surface of that globe that you've lived on all this time and you know all those people down there and they are like you, they are you, and somehow you represent them. You are up there as the sensing element and that's a humbling feeling. And somehow you recognize that you're a piece of this total life. This sense of interconnectedness Interdependence has been spoken of in every language and faith since the beginning. 
Buddhism. Hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Hinduism. Do not unto others what would cause you pain if done to you. Judaism. Ma shesanu el What is hateful to you, do not do to others. Taoism. Regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain and your neighbor's loss as your own loss. Christianity. All things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so unto them. Islam. Iman nayavardeid. No one of you is a believer until he desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. The genius of the ancients and the most modern scientific knowledge agree. The microcosm and the macrocosm are one interconnected, unified system. And we are one human family. We live on one earth. We breathe the same air, drink the same water. We have the same needs and hopes and dreams. We will move forward now with a new spirit of inclusiveness and cooperation toward all people, all nations, all races, and all religions, understanding each other's frames and boundaries. Then we can begin to bring about a world where people can live and work together in peace. On a planet surrounded not by fire, but by a spirit of goodwill for all life.